joining this uh, seminar. My name is Jean-Yves Tinvez. Uh, I will be the, the main speaker for this conference. I do so. And uh, it's going to be about TrackMate. So the, um, roughly, this is, this is the, the schedule or the, the, the outline of the, the, the seminar. It's going to be in uh, five, uh, five parts. The first one is for simply how to use TrackMate with a brief live demo. And after that, uh, like Julien Colombelli and the Nubias people, they told me that you guys, the Nubias audience, the Nubias Academy audience is pretty advanced. So we can do uh, uh, more advanced. So I would like to show you some discrete features of TrackMate. Like if you know TrackMate, there are probably things you don't know that are that new statware. How to extend TrackMate, mainly with scripting, but also I would like to visit the extension mechanisms of TrackMate. I would like also to publicize some TrackMate extensions, actually what makes it better and go further uh, in its scope. Uh, not all ex I didn't write all these extensions, so and every time I will tell you who to contact and who did them. And then finally uh, conclude in the, with the future of TrackMate. It's a technical webinar, right? It's not a scientific, it's not a lecture. I will not deal with the algorithms you can find in TrackMate. For this, I direct you to the excellent lecture the excellent Robert gave last week that was recorded on YouTube. And so if you want to know like the mathematics behind that and uh, the algorithms behind TrackMate, you can uh, watch this lecture as well. Very importantly, since it's mainly technical, we want to learn how to do things or stuff with TrackMate. There's going to be a question and answer intermissions every time after this part. Don't hesitate to ask questions. We will do our best to answer it. And finally, you know, these things should last less than one hour and a half and it's going to be propelled by courageous people, you and these very nice and very fine for people, Daniel, Ian, Robert, and Elnaz, I'm very grateful for them. Are we okay? Uh, is there, okay, if I shake my mouse, do you see it? That's gonna be my laser pointer, right? Uh, do you see, okay, in my case, I have the five figures on top of my screen. Do you see them too, or do you see the presentation? Just the presentation. Okay, I think so you don't see my face, right, which is, should be cool. Uh, okay, what's next? I think I would start by telling you a little bit about you know, why TrackMate exists, mainly describe its core features to read its history. I'm working as a research en engineer in the Institut Pasteur of Paris in a small facility dedicated to service in bioimage analysis, right? And so I'm lucky to work with these uh, people. Recently, Sébastien Abert, that you may know, actually left us, now is working in the Biocentrum in Basel. Uh, if you attended to the Nubias Academy events, you know Marion Louveau. She's an application scientist dedicated to the IC project in Jean-Christophe Oliver Romain's lab, and when we are desperate, she comes and helps us. But before that, this facility was you know, created at the end of 2017, it was functional early 2018. I was actually uh, um, a microscopy engineer, an image analysis engineer in the uh, imaging facility of the Institute Pasteur, led by Spencer Short and Nathalie Olner. And at the time, one of the projects I was responsible for was related to these beautiful chips that you see here. Now, these are uh, micro mirror chips. You probably know them. That's um, literally a chip on which there's uh, 256 by 256 micro mirrors. There are plenty of them. I think this is what fueled most likely the um, retro projector and the visio projectors that we have. But these guys, they were developed specifically by our partners to be able to be used properly in an imaging setup. Our role in this consortium was actually to put them at the back of the microscope and to run application with that. These micro mirrors, I will not go into the details about them, they had nice features such as, you know, very good reflectivity, all time and analog tilting that gave us actually excellent control over the light we should sign our samples. And so our goal was to say, look, like this is three cells, this is what, the cells, uh, this is the cone of light you use when you eliminate these three cells and that's the image you get. And so the, the, the setup with the micro mirror allowed us actually to control not only where we would send the light, but also at what angle we would send the light. And so with that, we wanted to actually tackle the very sensitive samples, imaging of very fragile and susceptible to light samples. And our goal was actually to make the sample with the lowest phototoxicity ever compared to other illumination modality mode. The question is, how do you prove that? How do you compare against other modality? 
and prove that you have the lowest phototoxicity. So that was the question we tried to tackle, actually. How do you measure a phototoxicity impact on a sample and compare a microscope with that? Alors, for this, we actually relied on C elegans embryo. And the, the principle was cool because instead of using a microscope to learn something about a sample, we were using a sample to learn something about microscopes. And we, this sample was actually a C elegans embryo. And so, you know, that's a, a short time lapse about the C elegans early development at the size of from one to four cells. And these gentlemen, and they have a very nice property is that the development is really, how can I say, reproducible in a physical sense. Like for instance, what you see here is a lineage. So we will see some lineages during this presentation. It looks like that. So that would be the first cell. Time runs from top to bottom along the Y axis. And every time you have a cell division, you have something like this, right? And so what you see here is actually not one lineage, but 20 lineages of 20 different samples that are overlaid. And so this is taken from uh, a paper from the Waterstone lab in 2008, and probably like me, you just see one lineage. It's because the C. elegans development is really time. It's like a biological clock. And if the temperature is constant, the, this development is very, very the same from one sample to another. In the case where you don't have photo damage. And so we reasoned that we could use this property in something that would measure photo damage. For instance, let's say that you wait two hours after imaging the, the, the C. elegans. And so if you count the number of cells and if you actually plot the lineage of the C. elegans embryo, you should have something like this, right? Count about 50 cells. Alors, they are not the same temperature that we use, so in our case, we had 50 cells. If you actually now use a phototoxic uh, illumination modality, the development will be delayed. And turns out, the C. elegans was very sensitive and we could measure that. So that's the kind of movie we had. Either we use very low power and had a normal development. For intermediate illumination power, the development was kind of slow down compared to this one and this one, for instance. These three movies are synchronized. And for very high power, we have a catastrophic failure of the development. The, after a few divisions, like the development literally stopped. And on top of that, we have bleaching. And so that was our actually metrics on phototoxicity. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time giving details about that. But basically, if you're interested, there's this paper that describes the modality to measure actually the phototoxic impact of a microscope. And the principle is actually to shine a very controlled amount of light on a single sample and to measure the number of cells you have after two hours. And for a low amount of light, or we say light dose, like, you know, we get like no phototoxic effect. And as you increase the light dose, the, foot, the development of the silicon stops or slows on, and then you have a few cells in the beginning. And so this range, and I'm showing with my fingers, that's not very clever, but this range of light doses, you know, this is the non-phototoxic range of your microscope. And the largest, the better. And so that's how we compare microscopes. So we try to compare, for instance, how you do, uh, the impact of what happens when you deliver light. For instance, if you uh, deliver light in short, intense bursts, you see that the range over which you have no phototoxic effect is smaller than, la than if you use long and faint exposure. And we even compare the white field versus spinning this microscope, right? Uh, but technically, a quick question was behind that was, how do you actually trace the lineages of these embryos. Uh, that was almost, uh, not so much, but almost a decade from, uh, from now. There were actually already commercial tools such as, at the time, IMARIS, or uh, academic tools such as Sterinite or IC3 that would allow to do uh, the cell tracking and even actually editing lineages. The only thing is that, in my case, the light I was playing with or the image quality resulting from this uh, imaging modality was not something I could control. You know, that was something I input. And so I had to lineage this kind of movie and this kind of movie. And of course, you know, every automatic way would fail. And there, this is how you have it. TrackMate was initially a way 
to, for me, to do uh, seal against lineaging in ways that would combine automatic approaches, but also manual creation, because there was no way, actually, something made correctly could track all this movie at once. And so typically, the approach we use for these studies, because there have been several, was to generate a first lineage with what we could and actually manually create it. And because we had to do a lot of seal against lineages, TrackMate was made to be easily usable by end, right? Okay, so that's the explanation of the core features of TrackMate. So if you don't know TrackMate, it's a cell tracking tools that have several features. The first one that, I, that we needed was you know, to have a good visualization of the tracks, so just so that you know when they're wrong and you can find where the lineages are wrong. One of the pitfalls of tracking is that it always gives you an answer. It, doesn't, it never fails, right? But you don't know if this answer is the right one. So you want to know that, and the, one of the ways is actually to directly visualize the track. So TrackMate has nice visualization tool overlaid with Fiji uh, hyperstack window. There was also a lineage browser, and you could use some features to color actually some tracks or some features, some uh, sorry spots, cells, or links between cells just to detect mistakes. At the time, there even been a 3D view of the cells so that you can orient them in space. And finally, contrary to most uh, single particle tracking tools, we needed a tool that could store and detect actually cell division. And like for instance, when you follow a vesicle that traffic into the cell, you don't need to worry about division, right? You're gonna have a uh, track that's gonna be made of at most one location per time point. When you wanna plot the lineages of cells, you can't do that, you have to harness cell division. So you need to have this situation where you have one particle that becomes two. And so we needed a specialized data structure from that, that's a graph. It is what you can find in uh, TrackMate. And finally, um, given the image quality we dealt with, TrackMate had to do a lot of trial and errors, you know, trying a set of parameters and then going back. And so the user interface of TrackMate, even the early user interface at this, right? So you could navigate back and forth and every time you would have the GUI that say, hey, what do you want to use to filter out spurious uh, spots? And so you could set the filters, and if you were unhappy, you could go back there and change the parameters and so on. Plus the manual editing, but I have the chance to uh, speak about that in a minute. And then finally, it reused a lot of the features in Fiji. I know that was a blessing. If you code something for Fiji or IC or any existing software platforms, you benefit a lot from the facilities there, Royce and so on. But again, I have a chance to speak about that. Finally, in 2017, the TrackMate paper was out and it uh, kind of develops a lot of these ideas now. Are we okay? Uh, now that's the time where <laughs> probably I have to stop. That's the, the end of the first part, actually. I hope I'm in time. I have no clock around me. Uh, that's the time where I try and run a live demo. I repeated and rehearsed this several times. Every time, you know, stuff crashed. So it's going to be fun. I uh, suggest that you, if you don't know TrackMate, what you could do is to do it with me. And so you just have to loan Fiji. And there's a test image that you can open directly in the open samples. It's there. And then after that, just launch TrackMate that you can find there. And then wait for me, right? If you already know TrackMate, it's not going to be fantastically interesting. While you download the test image and launch TrackMate, maybe you can do a quick uh, question and answers. What do you say, people? Uh, by people, I mean Daniel, Robert, Jan, and Elnaz. Yeah, th there is a, yeah, an interesting question. I think, is it possible to get the velocity and directionality of individual particles? Yes. Hmm. Uh, okay, uh, I'm known for short answers. So if you want me to develop, I am, you have to ask. So the velocity is built in um, and uh, directionality, uh, Jan, maybe you can say hi because you just pushed it this morning, right? Your changes was merged into an extension that we will show. And you also have some uh, angle detection features in your TrackMate examples already, but yeah, there is uh, add-ons for TrackMate. Available. That we will speak, I think, in the third part or second part, I forgot already. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, I will start the 
Yeah, maybe uh, another general interest question. Is it, uh, is it working only for lineage, but uh, can you also do basic tracking of cell division or, yeah, bit or, yeah. Yes, okay. The answer, so that's, yeah. that's something I, will not, I did not discuss in the history of TrackMate is that I was, uh, I'm still uh, actually a research engineer and a facility, right? And so we get a lot of requests for different projects. And you probably know this expression, when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And so I started to apply TrackMate to uh, a lot of different problems, including actually um, organelles or subresolved particle tracking tool. We even took the uh, single particle tracking challenge that actually normally is just for that. So you can do basic tracking and cells tracking too. Right? You don't have to consider lineages and everything. And um, again, I didn't do a slide about that too, but the um, usage of TrackMate now has been pretty diverse. Since the publication, people have used it in ecology, tracking animals, uh, in uh, science materials, for things I don't even know. And apparently it's been fine and doing okay. It's probably not the greatest tracking algorithms ever, but the the the, the the scope or the breadth of things it can uh, address is, is, is pretty okay, I would say. Are we good? Please say yes. Yes, I, th um, I think there was one uh, other question that might be interesting. Uh, how large was the largest data set you applied TrackMate to? Uh, not so large. The, that's, we will discuss this point during the limitations. So if you could ask this question again uh, at the end of the third part when we, we discuss the limitations of TrackMate. But the, okay, I can tell it right now, right? So you see TrackMate accepts every images that Fiji can open in an hyper stack. So for this, the full image must be in memory. So in the end, it will depend on how much RAM you have on your PC. And so there are some extensions and some uh, offsprings of TrackMate, Mammoth, that's made to work around that. But again, we will speak about it in a minute. OK, uh, can I go on? You tell me, huh? you're the boss. Bon, uh, the TrackMate looks like this, right? This is an image, this is a synthetic image of a time lapse of things that divide and merge together. Right, and you see, it's a very simple image. There are very few spots, and they're all uh, driving towards the direction. So it's an easy, uh, easy image to track, it's just to actually show you how TrackMate works. And so if you launch TrackMate, it looks like this. And there's basically this next and previous button. Here, there's a log that you can switch. And here, you can save the session at any time. The first thing here on the start panel, you can actually verify that you know, the metadata is set correctly. In my case, my image is uncalibrated. The pixel size is one pixel. But it's very important that you have it right in case you have actually special units. Because in TrackMate, everything is stored in physical units. The physical location of spots X, Y, Z are stored in Micron if your image is calibrated in Micron. So it's important to get it right. And then finally, this is where you set a ROI, but again, we'll come up with that. After that, it's all about clicking next. And so since TrackMate has a modular design, again, we'll come to that. Every time you can select actually a series of algorithms there. So TrackMate does single particle tracking with detections. That means it's a two-step tracking. You first have to detect the objects and then link them in tracks. And so the, the, the algorithmic part in charge of detection is called a detector. And there's a couple of them, but they're roughly more or less all the same. If you don't know what to use, just pick this one. That's the log detector. Log stands for Laplacian of Gaussian, and it's good at detecting bright objects of a black background, which are roundish. You just need two parameters. The first one is the blob diameter. And so typically here, what you would do is uh, try all in errors. Right? And so I see here, it's probably too big. The diameter of five is uh, better, but you see that I have many spurious spots. Uh, so we will get rid of them later, but if you want to get rid of them earlier, you can also play with the threshold parameters that will reject spot of low quality. When you're happy with the uh, 
detection, you simply click next and then track may it execute the detection. Uh, that's not a very big image, so it's relatively fast. It takes advantage of you know, multi-core CPUs and everything. And then you can simply click next. And so after that, you have a step that's called the initial thresholding. And so that's a histogram of all the spots that are found, in that case, 22,000. And the histogram is on quality of spots, quality of detection. So how likely is a spot to be a true is reflected by the quality. And so the quality, it's a very important feature in TrackMate. The quality is high if your spot is bright and of the same size, of the right size, sorry. A little bit earlier, we say, okay, please find the spots that are five uh, pixels in diameter. The quality will go down if the, the blobs you're trying to detect are not of five pixels. But this step is optional. You could you know, remove some of them here. I will include them all. After that, you have to select a view where to display results. And I can tell you straight away, this doesn't work anymore. So there's just one view that works, that's the hyperstack. So it means it will display the results here. And so you have all the results there. Well, okay. So in our case, we have plenty of spurious spots. And so this is kind of, you know, fishing with a, not with a nest, with a fishnet with a very small uh, scale. And so you want actually to put filters to reject spurious spots. And so this is what this panel does. And to act the filter, you simply click on the plus button here. And then you have a various of things that you can choose for filter. For instance, I could filter on X like this. Right? It doesn't make sense in our case. You can filter on quality. And then you see that if I put the filter here, I have only valid spots. Okay, importantly, this is reversible, right? So you can always go back and say, no, finally, I just want to keep this one or this one or this one. Once you, did that, once you did that, sorry, you click on next again, and then you have to select a tracker. There's a couple of them, but actually the only one that matters is LAP tracker and simple LAP tracker. As explained here, it comes from the, uh, Jackman Entel uh, 2008 Nature paper. And I didn't come with these tracking algorithms actually. Hulu Jackman did. That's just an implementation. And then there's a linear motion lab tracker. And this one is good if you have particles that are transported. If you don't know what to use, simply start with this one. This one just needs a few parameters, mainly you know, how far can a cell go. And if we miss a detection, how long can we can it be missed before we lose it? And how far should we look for if we want actually to find the successor? And you click next and then you should have the tracks there. Uh, again, like for the spots here with this panel, you can put filters on the track and actually uh, maybe not mean intensity, it's not very interesting. Uh, you can put filters for instance on the track displacement and say, keep only the tracks that move a lot, medium and everything and so on, or not, and simply like that. Well, so this is the basic usage of TrackMate. And in the end, you have your tracks there. Now you see here, I didn't allow for cells uh, to divide. So I didn't detect cell division. I'll come back to that in the meantime. So if I want to detect cell division, I have to change the tracking. So you simply move back, because you can, and instead of using the simple lab tracker, we will use the lab tracker, the not so simple one. It's the same tracker, it simply has more configuration possibility. Uh, if you're wondering why I move things around, it's because I have the, the, zo <laughs> the zoom window <laughs> on, on, my, on my screen, All right? And so in that case, you see that you know, the frame to frame linking, that's you know, linking one spot to the one just in the frame after. Gap closing is when you miss one. And then you can allow track segment to split, like that's to divide, that's right. And so if I check this guy and click next, you see that now TrackMate was able to detect that here, there's a cell that divide, right? And otherwise it's the same. Voila, that's the basic tracking uh, interface with next and previous.
when you reach the display option, this is the last panel, and this is where you can export your data to numerical values, or click on track scheme to get actually the linear views. Right. And so this corresponds to that, this corresponds to that, and so on. Like this. Okay, so that's 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 the end of this first live demo, and it didn't crash, and I'm really happy. Before I go on, uh, is there any more questions on this this part? I see that everybody is very silent. Um, okay. Maybe there's uh, so um, can we track also rings as opposed to dots? No. In this. Again, I will, uh, that's a very good question, comes back a lot. Uh, I made a slide about it later. The, the detector I have is very basic, uh, very basic. It's good, but it's good at one thing, like detect bright stuff, blobs, what I call blobs, you know, stuff that, are, that is round and bright. Any deviation from this shape is actually going to be lost. And that's a pity because like, you know, for instance, I would like to track things in bright field. Uh, I went, in my case, I'm very interested in bacteria, and bacteria are typically elongated. And it works okay-ish, but not as good as when you have round things. Fear not, uh, we can work on that, and that's going to be part uh, three or two, something like this. Uh, shall I resume? Yes. Let's go. Okay. So that was the basic part. The next thing uh, is going to be mainly, so I cannot be with you to look at your screen and to like teach you how to do things. So mainly the next part is going to be a collection of resources if you want to dig a subject and so on. Don't hesitate to ask questions about it. So we put a lot of effort in uh, actually writing a good documentation. If you ever have a question about FACMATE, how to do things, just actually try to go to its main page. That's you know the page on the Fiji Wiki, and here you will find plenty of you know topics online, uh, even like technical documentation, what's the algorithms, what's the performance and the performance limitations, and also there's a manual, uh, which is one a bit more than 150 pages that tries to be a pleasant to read and as complete as possible. There's tutorial to get started and there's also uh, advanced subjects. And so if you have questions, it's a good idea to go there. Okay, now we move on to the next uh, topic. It's uh, typically the interoperability and how to extend the capability of tracking. Now an important features when you have a tracking uh, tool is actually interoperability. TrackMate is a tracking tool, which means that you know it takes an image in the output, and the output are tracks. You know, tracks is just you know collections of dots across time. But most of the time, the scientific question you ask is not about you know just getting the tracks. You want to know how fast things go, where they go, from where they come from, and so on. And so the last step in the scientific question is often track analysis. I have my tracks. I want to analyze them. And so TrackMate doesn't do that. It's not its goal. There's tiny pieces of you know, visualization or things like this, but there's no big stuff in uh, track analysis. And so this is why there's interoperability tools, which means import TrackMate results into other softwares. Uh, so there are mainly two of them that I know of. Uh, the first one is MATLAB, uh, simply because uh, I like MATLAB and I started with that. And so there's in Fiji, uh, plenty of MATLAB functions to import a TrackMate file. And so if you remember, in uh, where's my house? Oh, I probably did something really wrong. Sorry, I wanted just to show you this button here. There's a save button. And so it will save the TrackMate session, the link to the image, the data, and every parameter you choose in an XML file. That's basically a text file. And so in Fiji, in the, if you look in the scripts for subfolder of Fiji, you will find here there's five functions called trackmate something dot m. That's MATLAB functions that will actually take these files and import them. And so uh, I like MATLAB, that's 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 a personal choice, but the nice thing is that in MATLAB there's a graph data structures, which is very neat. And there's a lot of facilities if you want to manipulate like cell divisions and so on. And for instance, you know, that's one of the C elegance with a few of the cell lineages highlighted here, so you can do that. T 
these functions I'm happy to say are almost properly documented like if you type the help section of this section of this function so you will learn how to use them and how to import things but if you want to know more in the chapter 8 of the manual I just linked before there's like a tutorial widely explained and so on and so here you can further up your analysis also at the time I was working in PASA and you may maybe know that in PASA we are one of the institute that develop I think the main institute too that develop the IC software so I typically, if we were in the same room, I would ask people who knows IC, and then I would just count how many people raise their hands. And so with the helpers, not that many people know IC, I'm surprised. <laughs> and uh, IC, I would say it's also an open source academic software for general image processing, but uh, um, they don't exactly have the same goal that of like Fiji, I would say. It's more like on applied mathematics and algorithmics and so on. They have a tracking interface too, which at this time they use a probabilistic uh, algorithm mainly. And so I was in contact with Fabrice de Chaumont, one of the main IC authors. And so together, uh, he developed on this side and I developed on my side. In my case, I made an exporter of TrackMate to IC. So it will generate a track that you can import into IC. And on this side, Fabrice actually made an importer for TrackMate files directly into IC. So once you generated uh, tracks or lineage into TrackMate, you can go back in IC and go back and forth and exchange data like this. If you never used IC, give it a go. It's a great software. It does a lot of things. Uh, it's worth trying it. Okay. Now, uh, is there any questions about this part? Nobody raised their hand. So I would like to spend the next uh, 12 minutes speaking about uh, less well-known features of TrackMate. I didn't dare putting advanced features. TrackMate is a simple tool, so I didn't dare to use the advanced way. But that's uh, typically when I see people teach TrackMate, I see that they don't teach that a lot. And when there's uh, users of TrackMate, that's things that they don't know that exist. And most of them are not in the manual. And so I would just like quickly go through and show you that. So the first one I would like to show you is that TrackMate actually uh, plays well with the, um, the ROIs that you have in Fiji, for instance. Alors, I'm gonna close this and then go back all the way to the beginning. Let's say that you have, where's my Fiji window now? Sorry about this. Ah, it's there. Let's say that you have an image, right? But you want to track only cells that are in a certain region. Uh, but nothing prevents you from uh, creating a, a ROI in Fiji and you can even actually make exclusions and so on. And so when you draw on your ROI, you click on refresh source and then process with the detection as before. And actually, uh, TrackMate will actually only include spots that are in this way and generate tracks from that. Uh, that's very handy yeah, if you have non, not so simple images and so on. And uh, blah, blah, blah. okay. And so you can generate a happy face like this. The next things I would like to show you is the, I didn't speak about it, about it in the introduction, that's the semi-automatic tracking. And our TrackMate has some manual editing, so you can uh, literally track cell by cell by clicking in the image. What you can do too, actually, is to use semi-automatic tracking. Alors, let me do that again. For instance, I have a cell here. You can, oh, I hope it's going to work. Nope. I have to start again. Please bear with me. tracks manual tracking is track made, for instance. So one approach you could take is to create spots, position it over an image, adjust the size manually, and then click shift A. Uh, you can't see me pressing on the keyboard, but just by clicking shift A, TrackMate will try to actually uh, iterate and find spots in the vicinity. 
So that's the semi-automatic tracker. It's very handy if you have a really noisy image and cannot uh, want just to follow uh, some cells and so on. So that's the semi-automatic tracking, but you can configure how it happens with this tool here. You see, when you launch TrackMate, there's this small icon that appears on the top right of the Fiji toolbar. And if you double click it, this appears here. So there are several things, such as, for instance, like tool to select a track or something like this. But there's also actually tools to control how you do semi-automatic tracking, such as, for instance, controlling the, the quality threshold and the search range ratio. Now I'm going to put something completely logic and then track things, right? And so you can generate like quickly uh, tracks that are semi-automatically found. And so I found that very handy when I wanted to follow, for instance, bacteria in a very dense area, but I'm just interested in a couple of bacteria. And so on. Good? It's very hard. Nobody answers. Uh, next thing I wanted to show you the feature values. Okay. So this is how can I show you that? In TrackMate, there are uh, what's called feature values. So I told you that TrackMate is not uh, a track analysis tool. However, it computes certain values related to the spots. Uh, the spots are these objects, that's the detections. Links, that's you know, what actually link to cells. And tracks, uh, tracks is this one, so it's, right. it's a collection of a cell that you would follow through time. And so you can use that, for instance, these feature values, they would be here. You would use them to uh, color and to give an indication to the user if it's good or not. For instance, if I color my spot via Y, you see that I have this rainbow color scheme and for low X value, it's blue. And for so Y value, sorry, and for large Y value is red, right? And you can even use that here. For instance, I'm gonna color the links which are also called edges, by velocity. And here you have a kind of display of uh, instantaneous speed, the cells and so on. But you can use these feature values for other reasons. Uh, for instance, I'm going to start again. Do the detection again as quick as I can. Oh, I must have done something wrong. Good. All are there, right? Like for instance, if you go into the LAP tracker, you see that on the frame to frame linking, you have a maximum distance, that's the search radius to link one spot to another, but you have also what's called feature penalties. And for instance, you could say, add a penalty when the quality is different. And let me explain that. Tracking in TrackMate is based on actually minimization of link cost. And so when you have a cell that you're trying to link to another cell in the next frame, you're actually computing the cost to link it. And so when you have multiple candidates, you simply pick the one with the lowest cost. Alors, this is a case when you want to link one to another, but in reality, you have to compute the cost to link all the spots in one frame to all the spots in the next frame, right? And these costs, they can be fine-tuned in TrackMate using actually feature penalties. And you could say, look, I know that the fluorescence intensity of a cell is constant over time. And so if you see one spot, and then you see a spot in the next frame with a much, much, much higher intensity, that's probably not the same spot. And so you can even feature penalty to say, okay, in that case, increase the cost if the feature different are very different. And so you can use that, actually, feature penalties. Uh, when is this useful? Uh, that's, that's a simulated case, for instance, I say, let's suppose that you're trying to uh, track a lot of spots that are very densely arranged. And so typically it's very hard for TrackMate to link that kind of things, it's too dense. What you can do is actually say, look, I'm gonna put 
a penalty on the spot intensity, the mean, the fluorescence intensity with a weight of five. And actually, in that case, TrackMate will be able to retrieve the correct tracks there. Almost, you see that, that there's a problem here, right? But it can help you in actually very difficult situations. So that was it. Finally, the color scheme. Alors, this is where Jan Englinger comes into play. The, the color scheme you see before that, uh, it can be configured now. It's the jet uh, color scheme, but you can edit that. And you can find uh, how to do it in the uh, edit options, trackmate, and then you can choose something else than the jet color scheme, for instance, VIDs and so on. What many people don't know is that, you know, you can also set the manual scale for coloring, for instance. Typically, we will scale the color from the minimal feature value to the maximum value, but you can also actually enter a manual scale for yourself. Now, the way to bring this window is actually simply to click here, double click on the set color by, and that way you can set you know, the color scale here. And that was something that was uh, asked for by Fumio Ayashi from Kobe University. Uh, next tip, please let me go. Uh, interactive results table, right. Alors, this is where I should have not played the fool that much. So let's say that I have you noticed know, uh, result here. If you click on the analysis button, TrackMate will generate three tables for actually feature values. You know, for instance, in the spots, you will find X, Y, Z, quality, mean intensity in many channels, median intensity, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what I wanted to uh, show you is that these tables are interactive. For instance, here, that's the track table. On this uh, image, I have seven the tracks, uh, there's some of them here too. So I have seven lines there. And so when you click one line, normally, as you see here, it should highlight the tracks you're interested in. That works for spots and individual links too. That can be very handy if you want to retrieve where you are and so on and so forth. Uh, also the track branch analysis. Uh, this feature was to, uh, to deal with situation where, okay, let me summarize. For this, I will open the data of Alina Sommer, who is a kind user of the facility. And she's been following cells, stem cells in confined environment, uh, a bit like us recently. It's going to take a little while to load. Voilà. So this is an example of one of the Alina. Hello. Results, right? She's following a cell of a time as it divides. Let me close the window. And if I look at the lineage, right, this is a big, rather big lineage with many divisions. Right? And so Alina and actually uh, was interested actually not so much in the lineage itself, but you know, how long does it take for a cell to divide? And so this is one track in TrackMate. So if you say select all track, it will select all the cells, all the data, everything. And Alina say, look, I want to actually analyze a cell by cell. So just after a division up to the next division and so on. And so these would be branches. So there's a module to do that in TrackMate, but to get it, you must move beyond the display option panel and go to what's called actions. And so this is where you will find in TrackMate many miscellaneous actions and so on. One of them is called branch hierarchy analysis. And if you execute it, it will actually decompose uh, each of these uh, branches and actually give you information about how many cells after, how many cells before, how many, dis uh, sorry, how far does it go, with what speed, etc., etc., and for how long it takes. And again, 
like the previous table, it is interactive. Because the lineage is very big, I probably have to search it below. No. I'm sorry, I probably did something that broke the link between the two, right? Oh no, there it is, right. And so when you select a branch, you can know what it is. It's very handy when you have to analyze lineages quickly and such as, you know, measure the, the, how much time a cell division takes. And so initially, this was developed for Milan Esner, that was a collaborator in the Institute Pasteur. And uh, the first result of that was in this paper. Okay, uh, what can I show more? Uh, Johnny, maybe you should uh, look at the time a little bit. We are 20 past four now. Oh, uh, yeah. 20 past four. Okay, I'm sorry. Maybe I skip that. You have that in the PDF and so on. Uh, maybe we go back to the, the presentation. Sorry, I'm really sorry. And uh, resume the normal way. Okay. So limitations uh, of fact. Yeah, maybe Jean-Yves, I have a, a question that comes from several times and that's uh, maybe a limitation of TrackMed. Um, is it possible to, to track cell with different size and uh, if the size change during the time? No, we don't do that well. Mm -hmm. the, the log detector actually has only one size. Again, that's a question that comes mm -hmm. often. And so the... I think people need to implement such an algorithm at some point. Yeah, yes. <laughs> okay, the limitation of TrackMate, so this is exactly the question. There are some limitations that are linked to the implementation, the way it's coded, and limitation linked to its algorithm stabilized. So in TrackMate, you don't have shape information. So there's no region of interest. And so if you have the results of a segmentation, you can't use it in TrackMate. The, the, the cells are simply represented by X, Y, Z, and the radius. As it was asked in the beginning, the image must fit into memory. And that's kind of uh, make TrackMate not so good for very large images and so on. One thing that we noted is that it's kind of becomes sluggish and responsive if you have a lot of objects, like beyond 110,000. Like you can make maybe 200 or 300,000 thousands of cells. But if you think about it, that's not so much uh, with modern problems and so on. Right? And then it generate big files, that's the XML files, that's text files, that's the reason why. And then finally, and that's me saying that, the programming standards are not fantastic, right? Uh, I try to, to, to fix them and to patch them, but uh, there, there's room for improvement there. I was young when we restarted. On the algorithmic side, just exactly you know, what the user questions are. They, they only work well for blobs, like round dish, bright object of a black background, enough constant size. If the size change too much, it's not going to work well. So far as there's nothing to track reliably and robustly bright field images, mainly fluorescent images. And one of the catastrophe, I say catastrophe, the main weakness of TrackMate is these situations. If you have a detector where you have two spots per objects you want to track, it almost certainly will lead to a tracking failure. Or in that case, you see that there's two tracks, two small tracks for one object. And so instead of having one very large and very long tracks, you have two small ones. And that's a very common, uh, common tracking failures in fragments. So it's very important to actually have a good detection step that you probably properly detect all your cells correctly if you want the tracking to succeed. That's the main limitations, okay? How do you work around these limitations? Well, first thing you could do is to uh, extend TrackMate or script TrackMate. TrackMate was uh, initially thought of a user interface, but you can actually uh, script it just to extend its capabilities. In my case, I use uh, Python because that's a language I use a lot. And you can perfectly script TrackMate to make it do things it's not supposed to do. Now here, for instance, we actually use TrackMate to track cells that were actually represented by Roy's in Fiji. I don't have time to actually teach uh, scripting TrackMate here, but fortunately, there are very good resources, again, on the wiki, and there's a lot of discussion about how to script stuff on the forum. So don't hesitate to go and look there. Here, you will find already plenty ready to work to scripts that can do a variety of things. I encourage you to do that. But the most important stuff is actually the TrackMate extensions. And to justify that, 
and we simply go through the TrackMate track line. So TrackMate actually started in 2010 with Nick Perry, that's this gentleman, internship. Uh, and I made him work on this. And after he left, I continued working on that. I was joined by the project on Johannes Schindelin. Or maybe you, you should know him. He's the person that founded the Fiji project with Albert Cardona and Pavel Domanjak, and actually many others. But the development of TrackMate actually took me that long and the paper was only accepted in 2016. Now, of course, I was doing other stuff, but it took very long. And if you think about it, right, this little human was this size at the beginning of the TrackMate. And when the TrackMate paper was accepted, it was this size. So just to say that the development of uh, end user software takes really long. Like this is a lifetime, right? And uh, this length is even longer or, when you consider the duration of a PhD or a postdoc or a software project, right? And so I, I would like to uh, encourage you to consider the fact that developing tools takes so much time that it's probably worth actually extending uh, users' tools, sorry, ex extending existing tools or actually make your own tools extensible by others. Because at some point in research, uh, what really matters is how fast can we enter, how fast can we deliver a tool that works, particularly in facility work. That's very important. And so this is why TrackMate, it was, and that's, if you think about it, that's the only advantage is compared to a commercial software, which is always going to be better than TrackMate. It's that you can extend it yourself and very easily. TrackMate is actually a collection of modules, and what the GUI does, simply place the modules in order. And uh, nothing prevents you from developing your own module, right? If you see something that TrackMate doesn't do, you have to know a little bit of Java, you can make your own module for TrackMate, you can extend it, and that's going to be really well integrated into TrackMate. There's a discovery mechanism that's provided by SciJava. That's a super great project of a Fiji that makes a lot of facility to develop good tools for science. And there's plenty of examples. For instance, computing the direction in which a cell moves, you know, that's this code. That's Java, but that's not incredibly complex. And it's a good, good idea to do that. And everything in TrackMate is made so that when you contribute an extension, it goes as a first class citizen. It appears in the GUI here and you can use it to color it, it's gonna show up in the table and everything. Like Jan and Robert, all of them contributed. And I can be, we could say that I'm the main track mate holder. There's been a lot of contribution for others just for that. And so that's something I would like to, you to consider. Building a, your own extension yourself, again, we did a lot of effort on the documentation, so you can find, so you can find. You can find a Kickstart page here, and that's gonna a tutorial, a programming tutorial that's gonna take you there. And online, there are example code and templates for you to extend, you know, because um, programming is mainly copy paste and uh, modify it, and you will find that here. And so, if you have some Java skills, I encourage you to consider these solutions. Okay, I'm running out of time. I'm really sorry. I don't know what took so long. Uh, quickly, some TrackMate extensions has been contributed by others, uh, not by me. Uh, a TrackMate extensions is nothing more than a jar file, the product of what you simply made that you can drop here. So there's plenty of them. There's the basic one, for instance, that actually add features to TrackMate, like for instance, measuring this uh, metrics there actually add new detectors and so on. Uh, I'm running out of time, so I will quickly actually stop before the end just to give a chance to answer questions and answers. But I would like just to uh, say it a few of them. There's even TrackMate in nine now. There's an extension of TrackMate, for instance, that allow to measure cell-to-cell -cell contact. And so there's a detector that will actually, what you see here, if you have two chat flows and channels, measure the contact area between two cells and track them over time. And in our case, in these kind of experiments, that was instrumental for us to actually measure the formation of contact between the T cells and the B cell. And now you know one, when they make a kiss like this, the calcium flux goes into the T cells. And it was actually cool application of that in infections and actually diseases, and that was really nice and so on. I am sorry, I would like to have uh, speak to you about Mammut and the uh, successor of TrackMate, Mastodon. I'm really running out of time and I would like to really to respect the time. 
you have the PDF with you, and I encourage you to say that. And so I think I need to finish there and thanks all these people and to make me contribute. You see, it. I'm absolutely not the only one here. And uh, I'd be happy to take any question from you if you have some. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there is also a question that comes two or three times. Is it possible to import um, segmentation or detection from another software and to put it uh, easily in the in TrackMed? Typically, in, uh, if the people track using uh, M -track J or another tools. Alors, let me show you quickly this. There's a TrackMate extension. Oops, sorry, not this one. If there's a TrackMate CSV importer, so if you have actually um, XYZ time, quality, track, et cetera, there's a user interface that lets you import uh, any kind of CSV files into TrackMate that you can use. The limitation with the fact that, you know, we can't segment shapes. So if you have shape information, it's going to be discarded in TrackMate. But otherwise, you know, just there's a TrackMate CSV importer and it's documented here. Jean-Yves, I may interrupt you. The, the official timing of these webinars is one hour and a half. So you actually have time until five o'clock, right? So we don't want you to stop uh, too early thinking that you have to stop now, right? Ah, well, then I have a question for Jean-Yves. <laughs> Jean-Yves, uh, some people asked for that. Um, what can you, what, uh, first of all, what kind of data can you export? What kind of tables, XML files, stuff like that? And also some people ask for how to export uh, visualizations. So for example, videos where you see the tracks uh, moving around. Maybe you could quickly show that? Yes. Okay, now I realize that I have more time. Boom. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is, that's the stress, you know. Okay, so, okay, so there was three questions. What can you export when it comes to uh, data? And how to export visualization? Okay, so when it comes to data, the let me find that. Actually, if you go into a TrackMate XML file, you will see that it's a text file, right? And uh, normally it should be pretty uh, self-explanatory. Like at some point, I talked to you about the MATLAB importer. And so they just read the XML and actually construct from that. So this is how you can play. Otherwise, I showed you here that you can generate tables by clicking on the analysis buttons. And so these are image a table. After that, you can save to a CSV and so on and play with your own data. Finally, how to export visualization. Uh, there's a special action for that. And uh, Robert is right, it's worth showing it. Uh, it's very nice. Never mind. People don't care about. Oh, uh, get back. Right. So here, what what we would like basically would be to play something like this, right? To generate a movie like this. And so, if you go onto the very last panel by clicking next up to the action, there's something called capture overlay. Now, so what these things will do when you press execute is that it will generate an RGB stack of everything which is uh, this, show you the finger, everything which is displayed here, right? But capture as it is. So now it's not anymore track me data, it's a movie, right? After that, what you do when you have this image is that you go to file, save as, AVI, Oh, I'm not going to compress it with anything. And so you can save it as an AVI movie. I don't know if it's done. Yes. And then after that, okay. Oui, oui, sorry, it's not over probably. In my case, I'm using a Mac. So if I double click on the AVI, it's going to be converted to a QuickTime movie. And then I can you know, stick it in PowerPoint. This is how I prepared this, this presentation and most presentation with TrackMate actually. Uh, is there other questions? No, 
and did I lose you? So um, there was one question, sorry, for um, if, you, if it's possible to decrease penalties. Um, so yes. basically the, that you know the intensity is going to change so that to account for that. If you don't specify a penalty, there's zero penalty associated, right? So when there's no penalty, um, unless that's the opposite, unless you specify it, there's zero penalty on intensity or whatever. That's that's you know that works the other way. Okay, thanks. I also would have a question, or actually I'm just forwarding one. Um, there is in the spot measurements, there is a parameter called estimated diameter. And some people ask for measurement of size of spots. Um, mm -hmm. So what, what, how is this estimation? Maybe you can quickly tell us how this estimation works, how precise it is and what it can be used for and what it should not be used for. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, you see that in my C elegance movies, I the cell as the cells divide and the development goes on, the size of my spot change, right? And I wanted to measure that. And so that's what was meant for that. The way it works is that it uh, makes concentric rings or spheres in 3D and of increasing size and measure the intensity. As soon as the intensity in a band around the ring drops, the algorithm consider it reach the border of the cell and say, okay, that's the estimated diameter. It works okay, even for 3D, provided that you have nothing else in the vicinity. Otherwise, it's not robust enough to actually measure the size of something like this. Okay. Maybe we could resume and I could say, a little bit about the future and present of TrackMate. Are you okay with that? Right. Yes, please. So, one of the key limitations of TrackMate is the way we store the image. The image must be a Fiji hyperstack and it must be in memory. And at some point, as we were going towards developmental biology, there was a fantastic imaging technology called light sheet fluorescent microscopy that was very good at generating terabytes images and just handling them, handling them was a problem. A while ago, uh, I started working with Tobias Speech in the lab of Pavel Tomanchak and Anastasios Pavlopoulos, a postdoc in Pavel Tomanchak lab too, as a way to actually bridge or actually plug these limitations. And that was Mammoth. Mammoth cannot be considered an extension of TrackMate, but it's a new applications that actually depends on TrackMate. And the goal was really this, like harnessing the very large images you find either with automated microscopy. So in my case, I was interested into bacteria entering the gut and causing diseases, or into developmental biology with you know, multi-angle data and so on, such as SPIM. And so that was the Parialet Embryo Imaging Project actually involving all these very nice gentlemen and the raw data set we had to actually track was seven terabytes. So there was no way we find even a good computer with that much memory. And fortunately for us, actually at the time, Tobias Speech, you probably know, actually developed a very good viewer for very large image, the big data viewer. And so Mammoth, it's literally just what you see on the screen. It's taking the big data viewer to visualize and to load the images and TrackMate as a data model for tracks. And so it's literally actually tracking with not TrackMate, but tracking on multi-view data with the big data viewer. It looks like this, and you see that you know the interface really is close to TrackMate. We didn't really run the wheel, except that you know the images are uh, BDV, or big data viewer windows and so on. And so the ultimate goal was to take one of the embryo you saw, the shrimp embryo, and actually made lineages like this one and so on. The main interest, enfin, one of the main interests of Mammoth is that if you think about it, that's one of the few or uh, the first applications where you can actually track objects on multi-view data. Now in our case, that was SPIM. And so we had like several angles of the same sample. 
but you could annotate cells in any of these previews indefinitely. But if you think about the, that doesn't have to be spin, right? It could be any correlative imaging modality like CLEM or anything else. And so that's propelled by the big data viewer, which was, which was really fantastic. And so these very courageous people, I think it's mainly Anastasios Pavlopoulos and Karsten Wolf here on this paper, they actually use mammoth that we built to actually do that. Starting from an early embryo of shrimp, they were actually able to backtrack all the cell that generate these digitations that come here. If you know TrackMate, using Mammoth will be fairly easy. And uh, if you have large data, that's probably going to be a good tool to start with. Mammoth is available via a Fiji update site, and you can find simply by subscribing to the Mammoth uh, web page. There's documentation associated to it, and more you can find in this paper. Uh, I think I hope that uh, answered the, the question we had. Uh, the next and final part of this talk, and it looks like I have like five minutes to do it, is going to be about the future of TrackMate. Is there any questions on Mammoth so far? Let's come in. Okay. So uh, Julien kind of asked me to you know this part. Uh, what's going to happen with TrackMate? What's going to be the future of TrackMate? And, so on. and then as a conclusion, I would say no future. TrackMate has no future. Well, that's just a pun, mainly. TrackMate, you know, it's now a tool that's relatively old, uh, that's stable, uh, I would uh, I'd like to say maintained and well-maintained and so on, but it's a tool of the present. You can use it now, and if you start actually uh, developing an analysis pipeline of an analysis workflow that depends on TrackMate, you're safe because TrackMate will not change that much. Like friends, you know, like Jan, Robert, and a few other friends, we actually work on it, improve it incrementally, but it's a stable tool. It's a tool of today. The future of TrackMate, it's not TrackMate, actually, it's Mastodon. And so Mastodon, in that case, it's a full rewrite and that tries to harness very large data and larger data. At some point, Mastodon doesn't exist yet. It's not released. It's a still a development project that's already beyond for probably more than four years and so on. It's incredibly difficult to uh, code and to release. I would just like to show you as a conclusion what it's going to be when we finish it. And so basically that's something that's made to harness big data. Uh, by big data, we mean like very large images, but also very large amount of cells. I told you that TrackMate has a limitation, like TrackMate probably cannot go to one million of cells, and certainly not to one billion of cells. And so Mastodon is a full rewrite to specifically address that, keeping the nice TrackMate features, such as you know, automated, semi-automatic, and manual annotations of the data, point-wise editing, plus nice things, and so on. I'm going to be frank with you. Uh, this is mainly an effort from Tobias and myself. But in reality, uh, that's mainly Tobias' brain into that. Right? I just get the chance to benefit from it and do nice conference and so on, but the, the, the real driver on this project is really Tobias. And uh, we can already show you a preview features, and there's actually a preview that you can uh, get in Fiji by subscribing to something called Mastodon Preview Update Site. And there's already things that work already. Like so far, the new data model is much more efficient, takes less space in memory, and it's much more faster to browse. And we were able to actually, on top of the nice features we had in TrackMate, put them back, but at a larger scale. And so all the movies I show you now, that's actually real-time capture. And it's kind of good to actually address very large number of objects. And so we are very happy with that. Of course, it's based on the big data viewer, like for, like for Mammoth, because so far, that's the main technology we have in the Fiji ecosystem for, 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 for large images. And there's like plenty of things to allow a user to actually orient itself in the very large cells that you have. And there are plenty of visual cues, animations, or shared data, shared between shared views, and so on. So that's, you know, even if you have to track a full organism, you can still pinpoint these cells. Interestingly, it's, uh, it took inspiration from video games. And so, uh, when it comes to interactivity and responsivity, it's a great inspiration. 
Uh, there's a special context, for instance. I'm going to skip that. What I really like is this. There's finally undo, redo when you want to edit track. And so up, undo, and undo, right? And redo. That's super useful when you have to actually track a very large uh, sample. The ability to go back and to fix mistakes is really great. Actually, it doesn't exist in TrackMate, and it's very painful that it doesn't exist. Uh, as for TrackMate, since it's an academic open source software, its only interest compared to commercial software is that it can be extended by yourself. So you can always add like feature calculator, like this, for instance, there's a plugin mechanisms. And so it, this will be preserved. There's a table to browse things or to annotate tags. Everything's made to facilitate that. There's an extension mechanisms I mentioned. So if you know Java, again, you can extend it. There's, contrary to Mammoth, there's fully automated tracking of cells, even for large data, on standard hardware, no GPU involved. And in the future, you know, there's, I think, also the contribution of uh, Radimir Zuman on this. But uh, if we get lucky, we will reinstate a 3D viewer for tracks and images in uh, Mastodon. Voila, so this would be the TrackMate future. I would say it's Mastodon. It's gonna take, it already took us a huge amount of energy of pain and sweat and time just to get there and still require more. Please patient, please be patient with it. If you want to test the preview, it's in Fiji, but it's unsupported at the same time. So voila. Okay, my, finally, I reached the, the, the last slide of my, uh, of my presentation. I hope you found something that was useful uh, to you. I sincerely do. And then I'm available all afternoon and night just to answer questions if you have some now. Again, thank you very much for your attention. A special thanks to my courageous uh, co-panelist -panel here, <laughs> sitting quietly listening to me and rambling again. And then sorry for the, the, the small mishaps and mistakes I made. Thank you very much, jean -Yves. I think we have a few follow-up questions. Robert, mm -hmm. do you want to start? You already unmuted. Um, yes, there was one question. Um, if there is a feature to estimate Brownian motion versus directed motion. Yes, but not in Fiji. I made something like this in uh, MATLAB. And so you would generate, okay, you would generate the tracks into uh, TrackMate and then import it into MATLAB and I have it. Do you want to see it? Uh, why why it's documented? We would have one minute time, but you can also post the link later on the form. We like. okay. I will post the link later. There's a documentation and a tutorial with that. Right. I will follow up with another question then. Uh, can you recommend a good resource or repository of uh, publicly available images to try out TrackMate, except the sample image that is included in Fiji? No, I don't know. No. Okay. <laughs> The, I've been working with my users' images, you know, as test data set, and uh, I don't know of a repository, sorry for that. But maybe some other people know, the panelists or the user? Yeah, maybe, I don't know, uh, of, about what uh, you think about the cell tracking challenge. There is a lot of data. Uh, mm -hmm. Or the, the, right, or the single particle tracking challenge, right? Yeah, it's single particle tracking or this kind of data, yes. I can put uh, the, the, some link on the, on the chat. Okay, thank you. Are we good? Oh, maybe one more now. Just like so, um, uh, is there anything relying on GPU? Is GPU pr processing available in or planned? Oh, oh, this is hard to make a short answer. No, and I'm very happy about it. The <laughs> I'm going to explain to you why the um, initially Mammoth, Mastodon, and TrackMate they were made as tools that should work out of the box. And so they should work on servers, on Linux, on everything that should be Java. There should be no problem to run Mastodon and so on. As soon as you make a tool that depends on the GPU, 
you commit to a very difficult support to your users. And Robert can tell us a few words about that. Or maybe Robert's never made any pro never met any problems with these tools, but it's very hard to support GPU because there's plenty of mistakes that are errors or bugs that comes from the GPU itself that's very, very hard to debug. You depend on libraries that are very technical, so that require a lot of skills and time. And like for instance, me, if I try this uh, to do uh, on this laptop, this very laptop, if I try to do like to use deep learning for J, my laptop immediately crashes for no reason. So there's no error, no mistakes, no error message, no nothing. And so we took a lot of effort to have something that's efficient, even with a smaller number of features, but that just run on the CPU so that we are sure that it runs everywhere and that it's simple to support. Oh, may I comment on that, Jean-Yves? Please. So I'm, I'm convinced uh, that uh, GPU is always run without any issue. <laughs> no, joke, joke aside. Um, we, will, we are going apparently towards an age where CPU is this one thing and GPU is this other thing and more and more stuff will run on the GPU. Eventually also TrackMate and uh, uh, Mastodon at some point. Um, yes. But at, at the moment, we don't have the support because as Sean Eve pointed out correctly, it is a lot of work and to have it running on many systems, on all computers and clusters and in the cloud and so on, is a lot of work. We will come there at some point, uh, step by step, plug in by plug in, and <laughs> then we will have a great time on GPUs. <laughs> right, right. But in the meantime, it's important to have something that works out of the box, right? And after that, you can take this extension approaches when you say, okay, you have something that works on the CPU, out of the box, and now I'm gonna build the next brick with GPU. <laughs> Um, maybe if I may still ask a question, um, there, forward a question here. Um, if uh, um, there's a way to export the jet color table or any other of the visualization color tables. Oh, I didn't think about that, to be honest. And the only thing I see that could do that was, uh, would be to take you know, a screenshot of the TrackMate last window when the color scheme with the scale is written. Yeah, maybe uh, another possibility would be a script uh, interacting with the API directly and getting the values, right? So it, right. It's, it's possible, but difficult. <laughs> yes, maybe also there, there is a re recurrent question about the 3D, you do not show anything about 3D. Could you say a few words about tracking in 3D? What, what will be the cost or what will be the, yeah. So TrackMate, uh, TrackMate works indifferently in 2D and 3D. So if you have a 3D image, it's TrackMate is just going to work out of the box with it, right? It's, so there's no nothing special to, to verify. Just check that the dimensionality is right in 3D, mm -hmm. that you have like 3D stacks over time and not you know, just mm -hmm. one big stack and something, it's going to work. So no, no, there's no worries. Just that the 3D viewer, that was uh, the visualization in 3D does not work anymore since an update in Java or something like this. Apparently, like, uh, there's a feature that not that many people work, that TrackMate also work in 1D. 1D, 2D, and 3D. So if you have an image which is just made of one line, and then that's, you, know, you follow it over time, TrackMate will work on that too. Uh, oh, I'm just looking at the number of participants. Uh, uh, <laughs> I expected 50, huh? just so that you know. I even register myself so that at least there would be one person. <laughs> oh. So okay. there, I think there are a few remaining open questions, but they can probably be answered in the post that we post on the image I see forum, the summary mm -hmm. post later on. Mm -hmm. Okay, d'accord. Um, but that's about it.
I thank you very much for, for your patience with me and uh, your time here. I sincerely hope everybody found something useful today. And uh, for the best, let's meet in the next uh, New Beers event on the forum itself. Thank you.